and tell your loved one, you know, Mike, Mike told me, dude, that I'm gonna drive you freaking nuts. And once you start going a little crazy, that means I'm actually getting good at guitar. Yaha! Chicka boo! Mike's music method. Come on in, you guys. I am very excited to be bringing you this song. John Prine, Summer's End, off of the Tree of Forgiveness album. It is my favorite John Prine record. His last album. Every song on this album is just like a folk archetype, you know, in the way that like Dylan or Towns and this album too, it, they, it just hits on, like every song feels vaguely familiar. Like you almost know where it's going, but not so familiar that you're annoyed because it's cliche. This perfectly hits that sweet spot that the second you hear this song, you're like, oh my gosh, this is a, a timeless song. Did John Prine really write this in whatever year it was, like 2020 or 2019, whenever this came out? Because the song seems so timeless, yet they're fresh and emotional. And it's an awesome album. If you're not for, familiar with this album, the entire Tree of Forgiveness album is beautiful. And down below, if you guys want me to just dive into this album and like do half the songs, I will do it. I love this album. So comment down below if you want me to just spend the next few weeks digging deep into uh, Tree of Forgiveness because it's a great album. If you're new to Mike's Music Method, check out the Travis Picking playlist. This is a fairly beginner picking piece, not like bare bones beginner, but if you've done a few Travis Picking songs, you got it. If not, watch the first five or six videos in that playlist that I just mentioned to get your fingers moving. By the end of this song, you're gonna have a nice little hammer on in the C chord and really be moving with that one and two and three, four and one and two and three, four and. That kind of picking pattern is really gonna be drilled into your brain and you're gonna be an expert at it by the end of this video. This one was inspired by my lovely student, Craig. So thank you, Craig, for uh, calling my attention to actually tabbing out this song at some point. In this version, it's Capo 2, and I'm mainly going off of the live at uh, Austin City Limits live version, but I do take some from the studio. The studio, there's a bit more going on because there's a second guitar. I explain that as we go through the piece, but Capo is second fret, and let's dive in. Timestamps are down below. Use them. Please, guys, utilize the timestamps. It will take you to the end of the video where I do slow run-throughs. I also play through a chord chart. There's different sections where I break down how to sing along with the recording. So all of this stuff is in timestamps. These videos are long, but I feel like I'm you're, you're my private student for the next 30 minutes here, 40 minutes, however long this video is. And I'm walking you through measure by measure with the tab on the screen. Download the tab at mikesmusicmethod.com and all that good stuff. I never say this either, but you can hit the thumbs up. Uh, that helps the, 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 the robots spread the algorithm literate across the, the expanses of the universe. So hit the thumbs up, like, share, and as usual, uh, check out the Thursday Zoom meetings. Descriptions down below. Also join the Discord where I field questions and just welcome aboard. Boom! So measure one. Remember we got capo on the second fret. We're doing this C chord a couple different ways Prine does it. At the beginning, we're doing the C chord. He's pinching five and two. This, I would do thumb and pointer here. And he's only hammering on his first finger. Later on, we're going to hammer on the whole chord. We'll talk about that later, though. So he's going from a C major 7, hammering and making it a C. So my pointer finger is not on the second string. I pinch 5 and 2, and I hammer that one down. Then I do thumb, jumps to 3rd. So again, kind of normal Travis pick the whole time. This measure, the thumb's just doing 5 to 3. First is that pinch, five and two, thumb to three, and then I immediately do my middle finger on the high E string. Three, four. It's the first half of the measure, then the second half he just ends it, thumb back to five, pointer finger on the second string, no hammer on, and then thumb on three. So the second half is just that, three and four, and the strings are five, two, three. So that whole first measure, three, four, Second measure, kind of the same, a little bit different. Starts the same. That's all exactly the same. The hammer on, third string first. Now check this out. We've got to kind of pivot our fingers here because the pattern now is thumb on five. And here we're hitting the second string. I'm actually moving my middle finger to that second string. Feel free to do like pinky on both these next, or sorry, pointer on both these next hits. That's totally fine. But I'm doing thumb on five, middle on two. Then the thumb does the fourth string here not the third. Then I'm doing the pointer on the third. 
So our thumb, instead of going to five to three, is just doing five to four. So the end of the measure there is five, two, four, three, and I'm doing thumb, middle, thumb, pointer. Left hand is easy, but the right hand shifts there. So easy enough when you do it alone, but it's a transition from the previous part that makes it hard. So let's try all of measure two here, three. Measure three, basic E minor chord, nothing too tricky here. Uh, keep in mind too, if you really wanna be lazy about it, you really only need to fret the fourth string. We're not actually playing the fifth, so you can fret that fourth. And we're doing six, four, six, three, four, one. Six, four with a thumb, six, three with a pointer, four with a thumb, and then I'm doing that high E with my middle finger. Three, four. Measure four is almost identical to three there. It's just six, four, six, two, four. Let's put those two E minors together. Three, four. Yeah. All right, now measure five, almost identical to one. And as I mentioned in the beginning, I hope I remembered to mention it, is that there's a lot of different versions of this song. <coughs> There's a, I'm using live at the Austin, um, Austin City Limits version. The studio version is a little bit different. At first I tabbed out that one and then I was like, you know what, he's doing a bit more live because there's a second guitar on the recording. So it's kind of harder to hear on the recording. Anyways, it's Sean Prine, he's a good finger picker. So he's always gonna kind of change it up, play it a little bit differently. Don't sweat it if your patterns and your string sets end up being a little bit different. But here is one of those examples of where he's switching up. Instead of just hammering the first finger here, he's actually hammering into the whole chord. So I'm hitting five and two, but I'm hammering down into the entire C chord. And I know I'm hammering the middle finger even though we're not sounding it. It's because we're coming out of the C minor. And he's just using that moment to hammer on into it and get, right, both of them sound kind of cool. The A to the C sounds cool, that's in the chord. So is B to C, so it works. So that's what he does there. We got a double hammer on, thumb on on three, hits the first string. So that's the beginning of the measure. That hammer, and then three with the thumb. Top one is my middle finger. And then the measure ends again, as we've seen before, just five, two, three, thumb, pointer, thumb. So the whole measure, three, four. Again. Six was identical to two. Sorry to interrupt, but I'm so excited. I finally finished Strum It Like a Cowboy, my first interactive ebook where I teach you everything you need to know about right hand strumming technique. Guys, I spent a long time on this book. I'm super proud of it. So go to mikesmusicmethod.com and check it out. Strum It Like a Cowboy. It's like 80 plus pages of all these awesome strum patterns, different picking techniques. Boom, dicka, boom, ding, boom, dicka, boom, ding, boom, dicka. I should have my guitar and be showing you them. <laughs> But you get it, boom, dicka, boom, ding. There's a little Carter scratch by the end, but it's all about those stupid arrows everyone hates. Down, down, up, miss up, down, up, up, down, up, miss up, down, up. And I lay it all out in this beautiful ebook. Not only is it an ebook, but every example I give in the, the PDF download, you click on that video demo that's next to every single example. And there's, I don't know how many, 100 plus, you know, cool little uh, practice things. My light's shutting off. But all you do is click on that button and zoop, boom, it takes you to a video of me demoing it on YouTube. So not only do you get the book that gives you a whole practice routine on strumming, tells you how to practice, what to practice, but you get the same content you love, which is this dumb face really slowly teaching you how to do it. So I'm super happy with it. Not only is it, is it an ebook, but you're getting this video um, stuff with it. And I'm just so proud of it. So go check it out, strumitlikeacowboy.com. Anyone looking to improve that right hand technique, that's it. Let's keep going with uh, Summer's End here though. Seven and eight are identical to three and four. So right there, 
the, those eight measures, that's the intro on the studio version. But in the live version, they kind of loop this other part before he starts singing the first verse. And normally this doesn't happen. Normally that's the little instrumental break in between the chorus and the repeat of the verse. But at the, the live version, they give it a bit of a longer intro and they, they do this other part where it goes to the F chord. So let's do that. We'll do measure nine. And it's kind of like the pre-chorus in the song anyways, right at the end of the verse. So nine is an F chord. I'm doing the thumb over the top. You don't have to, but that's how I'd recommend doing it. Remember, I've got a video here, that damned F chord, and <laughs> check that out if you're struggling with how to play that F chord. There's a bunch of different ways to do it. If the bar chord's too hard, don't worry, you can simplify it. If the thumb over the top is too awkward, don't worry, there's other ways to do it. So check out that video if you want help. Otherwise, measure nine here. We just, we're doing six, three with our thumb, or sorry, six, four the whole time with our thumb. And this F chord is six, three, four, two, six. pinching six and three with thumb and pointer. Then it's thumb, middle on the second string there. So pinching the sixth and third, then thumbs on the fourth, middle's on the second. So there's the beginning of it. And then it ends just six, three, four, thumb, pointer, thumb. So to put those two parts together in measure 10 here, three, four, pinch, two F's together, nine and 10. Pretty simple, but you want to get this rhythm down. Three, four, one, and two, and three, four, pinch, and three, and four, one, and two, and thumb, thumb, pinch, two, and three, and four. Lovely, you're doing lovely. Measure 11 here, just a G chord, and like usual in these folk songs, we only need our ring finger playing that third fret. Gives it a nice color with the E on top, right? We've got our G, um, what's that, an 11? Doesn't matter, we're folkies. I don't need to give you the jazz extension numbers. Uh, he's just playing E is open, so we're not fretting that third fret. He's getting a nice color there. And it's just six, four, six, one, four. Then right after that, measure 12, we put our pinky down on the third fret of the B string, that second string. And he pinches those two at the beginning of this measure. Pinch six and two. Then he does four, three. So it's pinch. I'm doing thumb and middle on six and two here. Four, three. So pinch, four, three. Then the second half of the measure is six, two, four. Six, two, four. So put that measure together. Three. Now 13, 14, I believe, is exactly the same as 9 and 10, back to the F chord, 3, 4, yeah, it's the same, here's the pinch. Then the G ends here differently, um, 15 is the same, um, or it's actually slightly different, slightly different here. It's just thumb, 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 and thumb, but now that and is open on the second string instead of on the first like it was in uh, 11. Six, four, six, two, four, six, four, six, two, four. You can do your middle or pointer there, it doesn't matter. Next measure, 16. I have the pinky back down again. A little more movement in this measure, this is pretty. Pinching six and two with that pinky down on the third fret of the B string. It starts the same as we've seen it before. Pinch, and then it's four, three. But then it ends six open on the first string, then the thumbs on, does the fourth string, then open on the second. So both of those are open. We do six, one, four, two. But right when I hit that two, I'm lifting that third fret and sounding it open. Six, one, four, two. That's the end there. So that whole measure, three, four, pinch.
Yeah. You're a genius. You guys are freaking geniuses. You're doing awesome. We basically have the whole song down. It's not that complicated. So that we did the whole intro, but you're going to see that this stuff is pretty similar throughout the whole song. So if that hasn't been too complicated, you're well on your way. Let's get going with the verse. And now's a perfect time though. Timestamps are down below. Jump to the end of the video and I, I'll have a whole slow run through of the intro. So I always recommend guys do like four measures at a time. And depending on your skill level, that four measures might take you a week to get down. It might take you a day. It might take you three weeks to get down, but don't move on until you've really nailed that stuff. And I promise you're going to learn quicker if, you know, maybe you're a beginner and you're jumping because you're to this because you're excited to learn John Prine, then do like one or two measures at a time. If you've made it this far in the video, stop and really hyper focus and make a whole long meditation just on those first two measures. Can you do it while talking? Oh, hi, dear. Can you do it while, yeah, having a conversation with someone, right? Is, is that finger picking pattern really fluid? And can you have a conversation and keep it steady and not fumble your fingers? And if you really get that muscle memory down and, and understand that pattern from all these different angles, that's the way to do it. Don't just power through 24 measures with a whole bunch of mistakes. But here is the verse on 17, starts on the C chord. A bit simplified, and again, he's always doing different stuff, so don't get totally lost in the nitty gritty here. We are doing five, two, three, one on a C chord. So the thumb is jumping from five to three, and we got the in betweens five, two with my pointer, three with the thumb, and then the first string I'm doing with my middle. So we got that. Five, two, three, one, five, three, one. So that rhythm there is one. Next measure is pretty similar, just a little more breathing room at the end. The string sets are five, two, three, one, five, three. So the end is just more sparse, otherwise it's the same. Here he goes back to the E minor in 19, and again this is always a little different, but mainly he's playing this. Six, four, six, two, four. Then measure 20 gets a little more colorful with, with a lot of every in-between note he's changing the melody. So it's six, two, four, one, six, two, four, three. So all those in-between notes are different. And I'm doing the pointer, the middle, the pointer, and then I'm adjusting the pointer. So it goes from double duty to the second to the third string. That's just easier than getting your ring finger involved. So again, three, four, six, two, four, one, six, two, four, three. Measure 21, back to the C. And this is interesting. I mean, this is a common move where you're just walking the bass from the A string to the E string, but I don't know why he's just doing it now, right? He, he didn't do it anywhere else in the intro, but he, he definitely does it the second time he goes to the C chord in the verse, not the first time ever. So I don't know why he, he decided to do that, but it starts the same, five, two, three, one. Then that middle, the sorry, ring finger goes up to the sixth string, and I hit six, three. So we're just putting the G in the bass of the C chord, giving it that cool walking bass, or you know, yeah, little walking bass pattern, the mariachi music pattern. So five, two, three, one, six, three. And because there's no color on the C chord, I, I didn't look live. I, I could have checked, but I didn't. You can do the big C chord where that's just always up there, and then the pinky is down where the ring finger was. So now you don't have to walk that finger. Because it's already down. Measure 22, almost identical. We just add a little more color at the end. So we got the same as the beginning is five, two, three, one, six, then he adds a two in between here. Six, two, three, and then right back to the second string again. So I'm doing thumb, pointer, thumb, and then pointer again, but I lift it. Uh, you actually should lift the whole chord there. So, so practice it that way. So it's gonna be six, two, three, two. And I'm lifting the chord because we're gonna move it to the E minor. And that B is called an anticipation. The B isn't in the C chord. 
does it a little early, anticipating the note B, which is in the E minor chord. So that whole measure 22, sounds really nice, one more time, three, four, five, two, three, one, six, two, three, two. Yep, you're still crushing. Let's do 23 now, back to the E minor. That part's the same, is it? Well, actually one little extra color here. So it's six, four, six, two, four, three. You'll notice the themes here. He's just deciding on certain upbeats to add a little note and it, it's usually on the second, third, or the first string. And you can play with that and have a lot of fun. We should try to learn it close to how Prine is doing it but then eventually you get the freedom to, to run off on your own and color this stuff how you want. So six, four, six, two, four, three. And then measure 24, slightly different. He does, he's changing the melody notes, but in a different way here again. Six, three, four, two, six, three, four, three. So again, thumb third, thumb second, thumb third, thumb third. One more time to time, three. Four. Nice. Then 25. Again, we've got we've already kind of seen these chords. And I promise right when we're done running through this verse, before we do the chorus, we'll we'll sing a little bit to it to give you the, the phrasing. So 25 back to the F. A lot of fun, a little hoppy back and forth here. Six, four, two, six, three, four, three. So back and forth between those threes at the end. Six. Thumb, thumb, middle, thumb, pointer, thumb, pointer. Next measure. Six, four, two, six, three, four, three. But that three's open again. He's lifting it again, anticipating a different note. He's lifting it. The G is not in the F chord, but the G chord is next. See? Anticipation. You get it? So that measure again was six, four, two, six, three, four. It's a G chord here in 27. Pretty sparse. Six, four, six, four, three. 28. Here I'm doing six, four, two. But that B string, I've got that pinky down again on the third fret of the B string. There. Six, four, two, six, three, four, three, six. Twenty-nine thirty is the same as twenty-five twenty-six three four that F chord. We lift it at the end here. Then these G's are also exactly the same. Sometimes he colors the end different, but but not that often. I'm pretty sure it's usually that. Whew, you're cruising. We're almost at the chorus, which is again really similar. But before we do the chorus, if you're not a singer, you can jump ahead, use the timestamps. But let's sing that verse a little bit. Guys, if you made it this far in the video, I'm, then you're getting value. I'm supplying you with value. And so this is when I ask you to please consider giving value back. The goal here at Mike's Music Method is to take all these amazing songs and use my talent, which is my ear, to... Get really good tabs for these. As you guys know, you're here for a reason. My tabs are pretty darn good. I take them seriously. Whenever someone finds an error, I correct them. But I painstakingly put them out. Not painstakingly. It is a labor of love. <laughs> um, but, you know, I make these videos. I'm doing note for note. I want to keep this stuff free for everybody who does not have the means or who is hard on cash or just can't prioritize music financially in their life. I still want these people to have access to these tabs and these tutorials. So that means you out there who do have the means, please consider the value for value model. What are these videos worth to you? Maybe every time you learn a song, it's 20 bucks. Maybe you're using this channel quite a bit and it's worth private lessons, which maybe that's uh, 150 bucks every month in lieu of private lessons. You're here at Mike's Music Method. So I don't know what it means, but please consider the value for value model. If you guys donate, that buys me time to make more of these videos. So think of, think of it kind of like when you give, it's almost like a charitable act. 
because by you giving, now these videos are free to everyone out there. And we're gonna, we have this awesome catalog, this incredible library here at Mike's Music Method. I've got north of 150 tabs on my website, have 300 plus tutorials on guitar stuff. And it's, it's my donors, everyone who's been donating on PayPal and Patreon and Venmo and snail mailing me checks, whatever it may be, you guys are amazing. And you are keeping these videos free and available and you're keeping more and more coming. So thank you so much. And if you're not donating, please consider the value for value model. Onward. So what I say with singing is first just do down strums and get your placement in the song. And what I mean by that is you're not singing on every downbeat, right? So you wanna make sure you're mentally putting the words in the right spot. And the easiest way to do that is put on the recording and just strum downbeats with Prine and make sure you're singing it that way. And if you can't do that, then you probably shouldn't be picking it and trying to sing it yet. So one step at a time and build that way it's much. It's a much smoother, easier, and quicker way to learn. So let's start with that. It's just three, four. Summer's end is around the bend, just flying. See the swimming suits are on the line, just drying. I know it might be hard when it's this slow. I'll meet you there. For our conversation I hope I did Ruin your whole vacation The next step I would do is add the thumb And it's only the thumb Make sure you're playing the right strings, of course, on each chord And then try to sing it that way Summer's end It's around the bend Just Flying Swimming suits are on the line Just drying I'll meet you there For our conversation I hope I didn't ruin your whole vacation Third step is not to do it exact But it's to pick a pattern you're already really good at just be there. Or let's just do thumb, pointer, thumb, middle. Oh well, no, now I'm doing the wrong. Uh, it'd be that, right? Thumb's doing five to three. I'm gonna do five, pointer, three, middle on the high one. So five, two, three, one. And I'm just gonna keep that pattern the whole time and see if I can sing to that. Summer's end is around the bend, just flying. Well, you notice there I switched it to have my thumb do six, four. I'm doing six, three, four, two. So I shifted what strings I'm playing, but I'm still doing the same pattern. The swimming suits are on the line, just drying. You guys get the idea. And then once I could do that, then I would get in there and see if I could match it exactly. Summer's end is around the bend, just fly. what practice looks like. I'm, I'm going to leave this in here. I'm not going to edit it out because you're going to have to do these things 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 100 times if you really want to nail them. That's why everyone isn't awesome at guitar. <laughs> and it's why everyone isn't an amazing performer is because it takes a ridiculous amount of hard work and usually some talent on top of that. But, but no one gets away without doing a ridiculous amount of hard work. So take it slow. If you feel a little insane, like you're going crazy, like this is nuts, or if like your loved one is listening in and being like, what on earth are you doing? Will you stop doing that? That you know you're in the right place, okay? That actually means, <laughs> believe it or not, that you're in the right place and tell your loved one, you know, Mike, Mike told me, dude, that I'm gonna drive you freaking nuts. And once you start going a little crazy, that means I'm actually getting good at guitar. Yeah, ha, ha, ha. All right, now back to the song. Let's go to the chorus. I'm gonna be annoyed because I was too far that way when I was sitting and I know the tabs are gonna be over my head for like the half the recording now. But I can't think of all this stuff. I'm just trying to like enjoy you guys in the moment. But you know, sometimes, there's a lot to think about over here at Mike's Music Method. Not really, but I just don't like thinking about this stuff. You know, the lights, things gotta be plugged in. You gotta 
when you hit record, the microphone actually has to be plugged into the device. Believe it or not, that's a thing. That's a thing. Did you know that? Because you can spend, you know, hours recording stuff and to only realize the microphone was never plugged in. I, that never happened to me, of course, but it, right? It never. <laughs> All right. It didn't happen this song, actually. This one's been going smoothly. But, uh, you know, the gear, the gear and the stuff and the gadgets and the plugs, they all got to be hooked up. Don't always do that. Double check the obvious stuff. Fingers. I need these to play. They're here. I have them. Ten, I think. Okay. We're at the chorus. Thirty-three. Just being playful on that C chord, we've seen this kind of material before. It's just five, five, two, three, one, five, two, three. Thumb, pointer, thumb, middle, thumb, pointer, thumb. And then in 34, it's just a little more sparse. Five, three, five, two, three. Here we go to an A minor. We haven't seen this yet, but the pattern is nothing new. Doing it very similar to the C, just five, two, four. Sorry, five, two, three, one, five, two, three. Thumb, pointer, thumb, middle, thumb, pointer, thumb. I think you guys got that. Then in 36, he pinches at the beginning, pinches five and two. So pinch five, two, thumb on three. Five, two, three, pinch, thumb, thumb, pointer, thumb. Then an F chord, nothing new. Six, three, four, one, six, three, four. Now, it, sometimes, y y and if you're playing it this way, then just hit the second string, because sometimes he's only hitting the second string there. Actually, live, I think he does that every time. On the studio recording, he's hitting that high F. So it doesn't matter if you don't want to bar it and it's a little more awkward. Just know live, he's playing the second string there, and that's totally fine. So... Either way, it could be six, three, four, two, or it could be six, three, four, one. It's up to you. I'm gonna do two, even though I wrote it as one, just because I'm lazy and don't want to borrow right now. Six, three, four, two, six, three, four. There was a high one just to confuse you as the listener. <laughs> then the next measure, he's pinching six and two. And we have a little anticipation again, but let's go through it. Pinching six and two. Three, so pinch, thumb, pointer, and I'm pinching thumb and middle, then thumb, pointer. Second half of the measure, six, two, four, three, but I'm lifting the chord at the end there. Six, two, four, three, thumb, middle, thumb, pointer. So the whole measure there, three, four, pinch. Then to a G. Now here I spiced it up a little bit because the second guitar on the studio version really accentuates this note. He doesn't do it live, so keep that in mind if you don't want to put it in there. But there is that second guitar that hits it and it's kind of loud in the mix on the studio version, so I added it. Otherwise, just play a normal measure of G, kind of picking it however you want. But I like adding it, so we're gonna do six, four, two, six, all on a G chord, so thumb, thumb, middle, thumb. And then I'm putting these two fingers down, and that's like, the, it's just implying a quick C chord. Right, if you've done other songs, you see that little trick all the time. Um, Kathy's song, Bob Dylan does it a lot, Blaze, Towns, um, it's all over the place. So it's six, four, two, six, and then I'm pinching four and two but I'm putting both of these fingers down as if I was doing like a C chord. So pointer is on the first fret of the B string, middle finger is on the second fret of the D string, even though I'm still holding that G down. So six, four, two, six, pinch four and two, but I put both of those down. One more time. Again. You got it. And then we go back to uh, 40 here. I'm lifting them up and pinching six and two, just normal. Before we move on, let's sing this chorus. I'm not going to go through the whole process with you again, but let's just strum it to make sure we got it and then build up the same way that I explained before. 
Uh, know that it comes out of the verse, right? We have those uh, two measures of G. Just come on home and the chorus on the C. Come on home, A minor. You don't have to be, F. be alone. Come on home. So there I just kind of did that quick on the fourth beat. Added that little C with the G in the bass and back to it. Let's pick it one time, but I think you guys got it. I'm going to take it from 31, just so we're coming from that G. Two, three. Just come on home Come on home You don't have to Be alone Come on home You guys got it then we transition, but we only do one to eight. We don't do the full intro like the live version, just the studio one. One through eight, another verse, another chorus. And then again, if you have your tab, mikesmusicmethod.com, free tab, huh? What a guy. Uh, then we go to this little, I, I don't know, this like bridge part or whatever you want to call it, in between where they got the cool string section and it really, this part really, whoo, tugs at the heartstrings and that's why you love this song. very similar we just get a little extra color and again I'm taking the color from the studio version uh, because it's a little bit it's a little bit prettier so here's 41 got that same F six three four you can do one or two here either one six three four two six three four then we have the pinch again pinch four three six two three I think I said that right pinch be all real familiar to you now. Here, new material though, 43. We're gonna pinch open, even though it's a G chord, we have open on the top again, right? That, that color, we got the G with the E on top, the 11. Pinching six and one, fourth string, and then right back to the first string again. Pinch, four, one. So pinch six and one, then four, one. Then I just end it, six, three, four. I'm putting my pinky down on the third fret of the second string. Oops. And again, I think this is a second guitar in the live version. It's really pretty, so I added it. If it's a little too complicated for you, don't worry about it. Just play whatever earlier stuff on G you liked playing. But we're pinching six and two with the pinky down. Thumbs alone on four. Then I'm going to hit the third string, but I'm going to hammer open to two on that third string but it's also this compound movement where right when I hammer my middle finger on open to two, I'm also gonna hit the sixth string at the same time that I hammer. Call that a compound movement. I, I don't know that that's what it's called, that's what I call it, because I'm doing two different tasks at once, way more than two, but <laughs> two distinct categories of task at once. So let's show that really slow, pinching six and two. Thumb alone, hit the third string, sixth string at the same time and then right after that I'm going back to the second string but I gotta lift the pinky a little bit tricky I'm putting one spicy one in here for you but then we do the thumb alone so that hammer on you gotta remember to lift the pinky right after it hammer and hit the thumb at the same time then I'm gonna lift the pinky play the second string open with my middle finger Again, I think one of those is the second guitar. If it's too complicated, just drop it. Uh, no one's gonna know. Prine's not doing all that live. Um, and then we go back to the F in 45. That's all the same, don't worry about it. Then 47, keeps it really simple. Just six and one, open on the top. And then here, you can do this in replace of the hard one every time. Pinky's down and I'm pinching six and two. 
four, three, six, two, four, six, and two, four, three, six, two, four. Boom, that's the whole thing. Then the coda, he just ends it in measure 49 here. Just walking up the C chord. You did it. You're, you guys are great. Well done, handshake. Before we do the slow run-throughs of finger-picking it, let's get the melody in our head. You, I'm just going to throw the, a chord chart up here, and we're just going to play through it to familiarize ourselves with a song. I think that kind of stuff goes a long way. The more comfortable you are, comfortable you are just doing the basic chords, it's going to be easier to start to finger-pick it. If strumming the chords is already super easy, then just start playing along with the thumb as I do it. And if that's easy, pick a pattern and start to finger-pick it with me. All right, so let's do it. Side three, four. I'm gonna skip the intro actually. Let's just start singing the verse. Three, four. Summer's end around the bend, just flying. The swimming suits are on the line, just drying. I'll meet you there for our conversation. Shadows cross the ceiling. Well, I don't know, but I can see it snowing in your car. The windows are wide open. Just come on home. Just come on home. Now you don't have to. guys play around with where the capo is. Prine's got a low voice. For me it's hard to give it a ton of character when it's that low. I feel like if I inched it up a little bit I'd be able to kind of lean into the notes a bit more and it'd be a richer tone for me. So experiment with that and let's jump to the slow run throughs. Slow runs. I'm nice and close. Are you guys ready? Let's just do the intro so we're gonna go all the way to measure 16 here. 
Let's run the verse that's going to be 17 to 32, nice and slow. One, two, three, four. Sorry, I get excited and I rush it. Two, three, four. Beautiful. Let's do the chorus, but we're going to run straight through to the bridge. Normally the chorus would jump to the beginning, but let's not do that here. We're going to do 33 all the way to 48. Two, three, four. Idea, the coda, we don't have to do a slow run through. Well, maybe we do because I just botched it. <laughs> you don't want to mess up the real slow parts, right? Make sure you get those down. Yeah, awesome journey. Great having you guys. As always, remember to check out the Travis Picking playlist. Ah! Consider support if you made it this far in the video. Clearly, you're getting some value from it. Thank you guys. God bless y'all. Peace.